Welcome to your next bold move. Our show is all about helping you take your next step, whether it's career or relationships or life in general. Hi, and welcome to Your Next Bold Move. My name is Wendy Kaplan. Our show today is about managing motivation. Our guest is Casey Mitchell. Casey is a senior trainer with Vision Quest Consulting and teaches and trains managers and supervisors how to unlock the mystery of what drives people to want to do their best work and achieve their fullest potential. Why don't you start us off? I know you've got something you haven't told me about that <laughs> I, I'm the guinea pig for. Surprise. So, <laughs> okay. All right. I just want to start by saying that when I'm discussing motivation with any group of managers and leaders, um, typically what I do, and I'll bring this up if we could show of the slide, is the um, Gallup's um, employee engagement survey. The slide shows that 30% of people are engaged. At um, work. Into they, it. Jazz. They're jazz. Right. They have true passion for the work. They're the ones that drive the company forward. Of the 70%, you've got 52% who kind of go through the motions. They're kind of checked out. They put in their time, but there's no real energy or passion. The scary statistic is the 18% who are not just unhappy. They're actively acting out their un unhappiness, and they're really undermining what the engaged people are set out to oh do. Oh my gosh. That's that whopping 70%. So when I show this model and we after after the initial, you know, chattering dies down, the very next thing is, okay, so what do we do about right, this? How do we move that? Typically, the first answer that comes through is we need to offer incentives. That's challenging to do during this time in the in the economy. Well, you actually bring up one of the pitfalls of offering those kinds of rewards at some point when you can't offer them anymore. Now, how are you going to keep people motivated? Right. And so I want you to play along with me. Okay. I'm going to You're going to give me something. I'm going to give you something. <laughs> Excellent. Wendy, you're my employee and okay. I'm going to give you some stickers and a dollar okay. for you to do some work for stickers me. Stickers and a dollar. Right. Okay. Now, you might initially be delighted, but I'm <laughs> going to tell you that's not going to sustain your motivational drive. Mm. These are the pitfalls of offering this kind None of... None of these are going to sustain not me. Not in the long run. Okay. In short the short term. term. Right. And for certain things, which I'll get into in a second, they might. So if you're not giving people kudos and you're not treating them well financially, you can't hold them. No. I don't think. No. There, it goes much, much deeper. But I'm going to tell you why that's a mistake. Okay. All right? First of all, if I have to give you something to do something, I've automatically set up a parent-to-child uh, relationship. I've sort of swept away all autonomy you have. You no longer get to decide what to do. I've said I'm going to pay you to do this thing. Right. So that's one of the pitfalls. Right, that's true. Another one is if I've paid you this time, I'm going to have to keep paying. Of course you, you to, are. Exactly, for you to do that work. Right. And as we just talked about, when I can't pay you anymore, you're going to hold back. This is the other thing. It, there's an addictive quality to this. You got a, that initial jolt of pleasure that you got from receiving right. that. You're going to be looking for that again right. and again. And that, those two measly sheets of stickers and that measly dollar isn't going to do it. So I'm going to have to come up with something bigger better. and better to give you that initial jolt. It also narrows your focus. You're going to think about the reward you're going to get for doing that, but you're not going to think about anything else. So let's say you're a sales manager, mm -hmm. and your quarterly bonus depends on you reaching a sales goal for right. the quarter. Right. You're going to work really hard right. for that quarterly bonus. That's right. You're not going to think about the quarter after that, no, or, the after, right. or your team members, that's right. or the organization. Well. So it's sort of a narrowing of the right. focus. And Good also, um, I would say that study after study shows that there is no correlation between greater rewards and greater performance. So even if you're paid really well, it's not the thing to guarantee somebody performs really well. That's right. The truth is motivation goes much deeper than that. It goes to the heart of what it means to be human. So now I'm going to ask you to just imagine the scene that I'm going to paint for you. Okay. All right? Okay. All right. So there's a group of early humans sitting around a campfire. One in the group is showing a tool that they've just created for killing the woolly mammoth. We'll say it's a spear or something. Yeah. And somebody else is explaining how to find nuts and berries. That's the thing that I wish managers would think about. We all want to gather around a campfire. It's not just for warmth and cooking, but it's to keep predators away. We want to hang out with our tribe. We want to show what we know. We want to brag about the latest tool that we created. Yeah. That's been going on for thousands and thousands of years, and there's no reason to expect that it's going to change anytime soon. So when companies are looking for how to sustain motivation, how to create a right. motivational uh, environment, right. they need to think about this idea about the tribe 
sitting around the campfire with somebody bragging about what they know and allowing that to happen. I've put together six motivational drivers. Great. Okay, the good. first is cooperation. People want to feel connected. They want to be allied with their coworkers. They want to feel that they're part of the, uh, the team. Okay, the next one is competency and mastery. That's about deploying skills, gaining confidence and self-worth from, from using those skills. The next one is huge, it's autonomy. Having the freedom to do one's work um, that's not being bogged down by bureaucracy or a micromanaging. I was just thinking uh, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's to be, it's to have that freedom to decide and take action on the work that you're responsible for. The next one is big too. It's innovation. Mm. It's that wonderful idea of discovery of having those eureka moments. It's mm. like, oh, look what I just did, or look what I just fixed. Yeah. And finally, there's purpose. That's feeling that the work you do has meaning, not just drudgery or not something that you don't think is connected to the overall goals. Those drivers are at the heart of motivation. And then there's the last one of self-protection. That's feeling um, that you're not having to watch your back. That's uh, you know being free of all of this defensiveness and turf wars where there's no ill will. Um, that's an important thing too. How right. can I how can I be creative and how can I work if I'm always watching my back? Yes. I want to show the next slide, which shows three different areas um, that can help put all of those motivational drivers into place. And the first one is thinking about the operating norms, the culture of the company, the way things are done. And really, that's about consideration for people and their ideas. Coordination, do systems and procedures, are they coordinated uh, in all levels? Right. Then think about the structure because sometimes the way that the organization is structured will demotivate people. If you've got okay. individual work um, units. units working on their own right. in a vacuum, right. there's no crossover. Not paying attention to anybody else There's in no the systems approach, right. Right. right? So they're all working. So there's this, this idea of us and then you people over there. Right. Let's say you have a siloed structure. Let's say the culture in your company is not conducive to motivation. The people side is what you can really drive mm -hmm. if you're managing people. Mm -hmm. It's the relationship you have mm -hmm. um, with the people on your team. That trumps uh, the structure and the culture. And that is about getting to know them really well finding out what they need to work hard, what drives them crazy, what drives them crazy about you. Yes. It just involves asking a lot of questions of them and getting to know them so that you can customize the driver for that person. What are some of the things some of the people in these companies do? Because it might give somebody some ideas. There are a series of questions to ask that really get to what motivates them. You know, those big, broad, open questions. What do you want to do more of? What would make things better for you here? That sort of thing. Those are good questions. Yeah. That, that, and the trick to asking those questions is not just to ask that one question, but to really actively listen to what the person's saying and not talk them out of anything. Right. I want to find out from your perspective what you need, what you're frustrated with. And my favorite question of all is, and what else? Because the first thing that they say it's is never the real it. thing. Yeah. So you say, and what else? And what else can I do for you? Uh, and then eventually, once they trust that this is a process, a helpful process, yes. they'll spill their guts yes. and they'll tell you things. A lot of times I think people are afraid, managers are afraid, if they open this can of worms, they will lose people. They will go to work in another department, they will go and work in another company, and somehow their dissatisfaction will have them walk out the door. And I, I don't think that's true. I think a lot of times um, it it cements people, it ties people even more to their job because somebody cares about them. The very act of asking the question is a motivator. The very act of having my boss at, think enough about me to want to explore this with me totally. is a motivator. I would rather open the can of worms than have it hiding under the rock, right? right? I want right. to find out what's going on. Right. I may not like what I hear, and that's where you don't argue with them, you don't justify, you just right. listen to what they have to say. You're going to find out a lot of really neat stuff. That's great. You've just had a chance to hear Casey Mitchell um, talk about uh, our interesting conversation about motivational management. And if you're someone who would like some more information on this program or on how we can help you or your company with leadership development, we're giving away a complimentary report called Five Leadership Tips on our website at www.visionquestconsulting.com. This report is a great resource for anyone in any job or role who wants to expand their ability to lead in a balanced, stress-free way. Thanks so much for joining us today, and a big thank you again to our guest, Casey Mitchell. And thanks to you, our listeners. You are meant to go forth in the world to use your gifts and talents. 